Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check out uh, using iAnnotate in conjunction with Google Drive uh, and most likely Google Classroom as your students will be submitting their assignments maybe through that way and therefore you want to be able to assess those on the go, mark them up, and annotate them, add some uh, comments if you want to. Um, so first thing, we're going to open up iAnnotate and go right into uh, the app. Um, you're going to add connections, so you'll see on the screen on the left, search, actions, add, and you're going to click on connections. You have all the cloud storage options available to you, plus WebDAV. Click on add Google Drive. Again, you might already have a personal connection set up, so this is good for adding your P Peel uh, Google account. So um, I'm going to title this PDSP Google, just so it differentiates. The next part is your username. This is where you're going to type in your P number at pdsb.net. Make sure you add that full um, at pdsb.net because you'll see in the next step you can't change that once you set that up here. So once you click Setup Connection, you're then going to click on the actual icon for your Google Drive. You're then taken to the Google. Uh, login screen again your information is already put in there as far as username so you can't change that even if you click on it the keyboard as you can see goes away so make sure you've put that in correctly before and here you're going to add your password again it's whatever your password is to log into any of the school computers and then you're going to click sign in you then are taken again to the two-step verification screen so the BYOD screen Again, type in your P number and your password. Okay, and then log in. So now you're going to give iAnnotate uh, access to your Google Drive folders. Once you do that, you see it's all connected. All the folders are blanked out or grayed out so you don't actually have them connected to your device just yet. Um, and then you're going to find your classroom folder. The other thing you'll notice is none of the Google Docs that you have in your actual Google Drive show up on iAnnotate. They only, it only picks up um, Word docs or PDFs. And so that's one of the things that we're going to talk about is the idea of making your students submit their assignments in PDF version. It makes it a lot easier as you go through this. So if they submit an assignment, you're going to click on Classroom and connect to that folder. You're then going to find the class where they submit their assignment and then find the assignment they've submitted. So in this case, I've, I've set it up so that the student has submitted um, both the rubric and their report in PDF version. If they submit it as Google Docs, so the one thing with Google Classroom is you share it out using Google Docs, um, they can do all their work on there and that will help you and you can ju jump into their work and give them the feedback, but when they actually submit their assignment back to you, you definitely want to make sure that they actually um, save their final copy as a PDF and, and, and submit that back to you because when it shows up in the iPad, um, you can now annotate it with iAnnotate. If it's Google Docs, it doesn't work. So just make sure you have to kind of walk them through that whole process. But if they submit the report, you simply click on the report. And if it's a PDF, it downloads it. If it's a Word file, it does a conversion for you once you start annotating. So that, again, it's one of those things that you make them submit their uh, PDF format so it, it doesn't have to do the conversion. So you see it show up now. You click on it again, and now you're into actually iAnnotate and you can use all your features as far as annotation from pencil to highlighter um, or kind of a transparent pencil to your highlighter oh, sorry on a piece of text that was an image I forgot um, underlining a quill with her signature sorry if you add that in there Right, um, and the one of the more useful features that you'll find with iAnnotate, if you click on your uh, menu options on the side, is the microphone option on the side. So this is where you can add in actual audio comments anywhere on the actual um, document, which is huge. So again, twice as much feedback, half the 
half the time taken. Um, and so you can go through and mark it all up however you see fit. The other thing that you might want to um, do is uh, the rubric. Um, make them submit a rubric as well. So I went back to the, the folder. There's a rubric for that student. It's going to download again. I can then hop into the actual rubric. If you uh, use your two fingers, you can zoom in on it. You can add their name. Terrible handwriting, but you get the idea. Um, and then you can simply go ahead and highlight the levels that they did for their assignment. And again, this is where you can add the audio comments as well to the rubric so you give that overall feedback. When you're done this, what you're going to want to do is that little uh, red arrow circle. You're going to sync this back to your Google Drive. And this is going to take the uh, annotations with it um, and put it back on that file. And because, again, if you're using Google Classroom, this file is being shared with you by the student. So it's automatically going back to the student. One thing to note as well with this, though, is that back um, when the student opens it up, if they open it up in the web browser, uh, they will not see the annotations. So you need to get them to, um, or so there's the audio comments, the annotations they'll see, but for the audio comments, get them to actually download the um, document as a PDF and open it up with Adobe Reader, and then the audio comments will appear to them. All right.